now we're going to see another example of Stephen Anderson teaching replacement theology, and this time uh, twisting the scriptures found in Galatians chapter 4, talking about Isaac versus Ishmael, uh, the, the Isaac born after the spirit, Ishmael born after the flesh. And what he's going to do with this whole thing is he's going to say that the Jews are of today actually are Ishmael. They're actually the wicked you know, people. They're, they're not of the covenant anymore. You know, even God, even though God made an unconditional covenant with Abraham and to his seed that went down through Isaac and Jacob, you know, down through. But, oh, that's no good anymore and everything else. It's replacement theology uh, heretics like Anderson, these Catholics like this, they're just so disgusting. But let's watch Israel moment number 24. So according to this scripture, Abraham's two sons are an allegory. His son Ishmael represents the old covenant and the children of the flesh, the physical children of Abraham. Isaac, on the other hand, represents the spiritual children of Abraham, the children of promise. That's why the Apostle Paul says unto the Gentile believers of Galatia in verse 28, Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. So here in Galatians 4.28, he says that we that believe on Christ are the children of promise. The fleshly children of Abraham that don't believe on Jesus Christ, they are spiritual Ishmael, according to this scripture. So a lot of people will try to teach that, oh yeah, the Jews over there, you know, they are the sons of Isaac. They're the sons of uh, Israel and that land belongs to them. But wait a minute, God doesn't recognize them as such. God says they're a spiritual Ishmael. And people will often say, oh, the Palestinians, those are all the children of Ishmael. You know who the real children of Ishmael are, according to the New Testament? God looks at the Jews today that don't believe on Jesus Christ, and he says, you're of Hagar. You are Ishmael. So when we study Galatians 4, we see that the allegory here, the symbolism of the Old Testament, is that Isaac represents the saved believer, the true son of Abraham, and Ishmael represents the bastard son of Abraham, the one who is of the flesh. And the Bible says that's the unbelieving Jews today. They're the bastard sons of Abraham. They're not going to inherit with the son of the free woman. Ishmael was cast out. He doesn't inherit. It's Isaac that inherits the kingdom. And that would be Bible-believing Christians. Isn't that vile? He makes it that the... Ishmael there is the unbelieving Jews of today, even though that doesn't appear at all in the text. You know, the text is talking about anybody who's lost and unbelieving. It doesn't single out the Jews as a specific people. Unless you're replacement theology, then you go through and you find whatever you can to twist, whatever scriptures you can twist to attack the Jewish people. You see? You say, what about those unbelieving Jews? Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about that. Okay. Revelation chapter 11, verse 13. And you can read this whole chapter. It will really clear things up for you in terms of our relationship to the Jews and what God has planned for them. It says here, uh, or Romans chapter 11, verse 13, For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, what's that? Physical Jews, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert graft in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be graft in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. Let me just stop there for a minute. You say, what on earth is going on here, Brian? I don't understand all this stuff. What is going on? Well, what's going on there is, Paul is simply saying, the Jews at this time... As nationally, they have rejected Jesus Christ as their Savior. 
Now, all those promises, that those covenants and the promises and everything else that God made to Abraham and to Isaac and Jacob and on down through, not through Ishmael. See, what was the purpose of Ishmael being born? God comes to Abraham and he says, you're going to have a son. And Sarah goes, well, it can't be through me. I'm too old. Hey, Hagar, come in here. Yeah, Abraham, Hagar, go ahead. And Abraham has a son through the Egyptian handmaid, Hagar. Hagar, however you want to say it. He has a son through her. Why? Because Sarah didn't believe what God said. And finally she believes, you know, there and, and you know, God gives them a son, Isaac. And that's what's going on here. God says, that covenant that I made with you, it was through for your son that you were going to have with you and Sarah. Not through Ishmael. Now, Ishmael, representing the Arabic people, if you do the genealogy coming down through, which you can do according to the Bible, of course, by the way. It's not endless genealogies or things like that, which we're going to actually see Anderson in an upcoming video here. He actually does endless genealogies and proves that he can't even scientifically reason things. I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but the fact of the matter is, yes, you can trace yourself back through and see which son you go to, which which of the three sons of Noah, and then going down from that. But with Jews and Arabic people, you can see the descendants where they go to. Okay? And you take a you know descendant of Ishmael, they are not, you know, they're not in that covenant relationship that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're not in that. The only way they can get into it is through Jesus Christ. See? They become a wild olive tree and they get grafted in. Now, if you don't understand the thing of um, grafting branches onto trees and stuff like this, you basically you have a root and the, the, the stump of the tree basically comes up. You can take a wild branch and you can cut it a certain way and insert it into that tree and tie it on or put some little glue on or whatever else there and it will actually grow and it'll graft itself into that root. So then the branch, the wild olive branch, is the really great thing and stuff like that. No, no. It's only good and can only produce fruit because it's connected to the roots. The roots are bearing the branch. The, ban the branch is not bearing the roots. Okay? You break the roots off of a tree, that tree dies. You break a couple branches off, the tree goes on living. You see? So the branches are not the ones controlling the system. It's the root. And what is the root? If you're saved, the root is Israel, the nation of Israel, God's chosen nation. And I, myself, am a wild branch that's been grafted into that nation of Israel. Now, I can be a partaker of the covenants. I am an adopted child. You know, it'd be kind of like the we have the holidays coming up here and things, and uh, some family invites me over, and I come walking in there, and I don't know anybody, and, and you know, I'm kind of a stranger there and whatever else, and I just kind of make myself at home and start pushing people around, hey, get, get out of here, this is my house and things now. No, it doesn't work that way, you know. And that's what a lot of people are trying to do with Israel. They're trying to say, well, you know, I can push Israel around and the Jews and, and everything else here and this is our book and we, we can change it and do whatever we want. No, no, no. If you're a Christian, you've been invited in. You're adopted in. All right. Don't boast against the uh, root. But look here at uh, verse 21. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Okay? Let me just stop there. Now, I made a sermon uh, not quite a year ago, some questions on eternal security, and, and the question was raised, is this a reference to somebody being cut off in the sense of salvation? And at the time I said, you know, well, I don't really know. I didn't say, absolutely, yes, definitely, you can lose your salvation here, definitely. I said, I, honestly, I don't really know. If there are exceptions, this could be one of them. I don't know. I can't be totally dogmatic. And it's all over the place now. Brian Ellinger's against eternal security. 
I just said I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm not a pope for some of the people out there that I can just rule with great authority and I can tell you exactly what the Bible teaches in every situation. I don't know. I don't mess with certain areas like this. So I look and I go, man, you know, I'm not going to mess around with the Jews. Right? I'm not going to mess around with changing God's word. Revelation chapter 22. It was the other one I have questions on. Could this be that somebody gets cut off and that, that is broken off and God says, okay, you want to mess with Israel? Snap. You're out. Could it be that? Could be. Could it be a national cutting off? Could it be God looks down and says, okay, I cut off Israel and, and blessing them. You'll still be saved, but I'm going to cut your nation off and you're going to get to experience major persecution. That's another possibility. Again, I don't know. All right? But the point is, either way you look at it, it's a very bad thing to go against the nation of Israel, to go against the root. The root is what bears us, not the other way around. All right? Be real careful about that. But uh, let's get back to the video here. We'll show you this thing again where Anderson is openly saying that the Jews are now somehow Ishmael and, you know, the Palestinians are Jews or something. He's like, the guy is so warped. Let's watch. It's Israel, mom Israel moment number 25. That the, the Jews today, he's saying, are persecuting the Christians. Now, let's keep reading. It says in verse 29, but of the free. And he just finished saying that the children of the bondwoman are the current inhabitants of Jerusalem. Um, okay, let me stop there. The children of the bondwoman are the current inhabitants, inhabitants of Jerusalem. The Bible says no such thing. He's he just, the guy's such a liar. It's incredible. Let's continue. It's the physical seed of Abraham that are the spiritual Ishmael. And you say, wait a minute, Jews persecuting Christians? What are you talking about? Well, if you read the book of Acts, the Jews are persecuting the Christians all throughout the book of Acts. And, you know, we often think of the Romans persecuting the Christians. You're not going to find it in the book of Acts because when you study the book of Acts, you'll see that the Romans are constantly defending the Apostle Paul against the Jews. The Jews are trying to tear him apart. The Jews are trying to kill him. And the Romans have to come and rescue him out of their hands. Oh, those good Romans. Boy, we can sure be thankful for those wonderful Christian Romans. Yeah, okay. Guy's a Catholic here, definitely. But the point is, he's like saying that, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, the, it's no longer the, the physical descendants of Abraham. Huh? The Jews are, you know, we're, we're talking about here the, the physical seed of Abraham. He, he said that in there. But it's not the Jews. It's the Christians. So the Christians are now the physical descendants of Abraham. I thought we were spiritual descendants of Abraham. The guy is nuts. He's absolutely crazy. The Jews today are Ishmael. We're the true Israel. So the Jews today are Ishmael. So God's made a covenant with Ishmael. An everlasting covenant that won't be broken. He's nuts. Let's watch another one here. The Palestinians are of Ishmael. And the Jews are of Israel. No, every Jew is also of Ishmael because of mixing. And every, every Palestinian is also of Israel. I mean, it's either spirits that have made him this insane or maybe he's actually losing his mind. I mean, it's hard to even watch these videos and comment on them. Because it's just, he's all over the place. He contradicts himself so much. I try to make sense of him twisting scripture and it does, I can't make it make sense. <laughs> does that make sense? I mean, it's so messed up. You know, the, the, the Jews are, are, are physical Ishmael and, 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 you know, Ishmael is spiritual Israel. And it doesn't matter because we're all blended and mixed together. So there are no Jews and there are no physical Jews. And there's the, But we're spiritual Jews because the spiritual Jews are physical Jews. And the physical Jews are spiritual Jews. Huh? Let's watch one more video here. 
Now, anybody who understands what I explained just now, anybody who knows math, you know, we've got an, a, a certified accountant. Do you approve this message? We have a certified accountant in the front row here that just told me that he approves what I'm saying. Because any mathematician knows that this is true. And you know what? Any scientist will tell you this is true. We talked to the guy at the DNA lab. He said, you go back several hundred years, we're all the same. Because we're all, you know what? The Bible was right when it said we're all of one blood. Yeah. That God has made the nations of the earth of one blood. You sit there and say, oh, I'm just purely a white person. Oh, I'm just purely Asian. I'm just purely African. No, you're not. No one is. No one is. That's why it's so ridiculous to take pride in that. Oh, well, I'm Jewish. You're a Gentile. Those Palestinians over there all descend from Abraham. Every single one of them. Well, no, you mean most. All of them. Every single Palestinian is a descendant of Jacob. Anybody who disputes that statement after seeing this information just doesn't understand math and doesn't understand science. Well, um, <clears throat> I read in my Bible, over here in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20, down here it says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. If you don't understand Stephen Anderson's sim, uh, system, you just don't understand math and you don't understand science. Well, I have some advice for you, Christian. Keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding Stephen Anderson and his profane and vain babblings and his oppositions of science falsely so called. We're going to be talking about his DNA science and his endless genealogy chart, which he even calls it that. We're going to be talking about that coming up here in the next couple of videos. Absolutely incredible.